Welcome back. Our first guest this morning is expert antiques appraiser and featured guest at the Home and Garden Show, Dr. Lori. She amazes everyone with her knowledge of items of all kinds on her antiques home show stage. Yeah, we've loved her having her uh, here on PTL every day to share some of her show finds from audiences right here in Pittsburgh, like this World War II trumpet from last night's show. Yeah, you got it. There has to be a story behind that, yeah. Dr. Good Lori. Good morning. Good morning. I've had wonderful Pittsburgh stories. We've had tremendous stories. Um, of everything from, you know, uh, Mesopotamia to drug paraphernalia, you name it, <laughs> we've got it at the home show. Um, but basically, uh, people bring in their art antiques and collectibles. That particular trumpet, what, that particular woman, that's Rachel, her father served in Normandy, the Normandy invasion. Wow. Wow. He was a radio repairman operator, so he's right there on the beaches of Normandy, and he was with Patton's army. Wow. And after, of course, the war, many of those GIs stayed for the occupation forces, mm -hmm. and they helped to rebuild much of Europe, and he played in the Patton Band. How cool. So that's what the trumpet is. Wow. The trumpet was um, gold leaf, so it was all 14-karat gold leaf on top of it. It was made in Germany. It had mother-of-pearl handles at the top, and basically it was worth about $5,000. Wow. A fantastic example. And she had his discharge papers in the trumpet case with it. It was right. a wonderful event last so, night. So something like that, if she hangs on to that for generations and generations and generations, I mean, is, it, is the value going to continue to grow? Yes, it will it? only increase in value. Okay. The way we establish value has to do with quality and historical value. Okay. Okay, monetary value does come into it, but when we think about monetary value, it has to have some kind of historical significance because right. mm -hmm. art and antiques reflect society what are we, what's right. important to us in a certain time period and then of course has to be of high quality so the gold leafed you know uh, trumpet mm -hmm. helps right yeah let me it's ask beautiful. you also um, <laughs> going on into the future the story behind the trumpet is so important as well exactly what right. can she do to make sure that that story stays with it and people know that that's it perfect it does not have to be fancy all you have to do is write it down I don't care if you sit at your kitchen table and write it down because you're telling your kids all these different things and you might miss the story. Right. Right. You're trying to bring them up to be good citizens in the world. And what happens is, just write down the story. And your longhand would be great because then you see mom's longhand in 50 years kind of thing. Right. Date the piece of paper. If you want to put it on your computer, that's fine. I always say put it with your important papers because your history is as important as the deed to your house and, you know, somebody's military papers and those kinds of things. So yeah, Renee, very good, Ron. Thanks for reminding oh, us no about that. Yeah. Renee uh, brought you a doll last night, too, from the 1950s. Yeah, Renee brought me a doll from the 1950s, which is the German prototype for Barbie. Get out. Yeah, okay. Barbie actually Look was... That. Um, wow. Okay, that's called a build doll. That's Lily, a build doll. And she build looks was mad. The, yeah, she's a little angry. <laughs> I think it's the eyebrows. It, it might be. Eyebrows? You know, too much makeup, you know, when it pulls... Not Renee, know? I'm talking about the doll. I know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I know. But she has a, a wonderful um, Asian-inspired dress on, really, really chic. And uh, she, in fact, is a build doll. Build dolls were the, the German fashion dolls that mm -hmm. the folks at Mattel saw and brought back to the New York City... Um, Toy Fair in the late 1950s and started this idea of fashion dolls a la Barbie. Very cool. Yeah, she looks like Barbie, only yeah. Yeah. more angry. Right? It, it's yeah. the eyebrows, definitely. I think so. Okay, so let's talk about the items on the table. And these yeah. are from our friend Lori, photographer at KDKA. So what do we have? I want to talk about a couple of things that you won't expect. We were expecting to talk about the Japanese woodblock block print, but I want to talk about this frame. You see this frame with the um, Phillips head screws in it? This is called a Kulik frame, and Kulik frames are from the 1950s, and they are some of the first frames that are introduced in the Museum of Modern Art. Mm. They're very valuable frames. Oh, the wow. frame is worth about $700 on this. Wow. Before I even start talking art. Okay. So if you'll hold that for me a little bit, Ron, I would be grateful. I'm going to move this out of the sure. way just because I should. And um, <laughs> no, I trust you, Ron, but you never know. <laughs> so, anyway, this is a Japanese woodblock print. That means that you take a block of wood, and each individual color is its own individual woodblock. Wow. So look at all the different colors, and imagine that you carve out its own individual block for each one. It's like a stamp printing process. Okay. This dates back to about 1715, this particular process, and the print that you have right here dates any time between 1825 and 1850. Based on the very red, dark chop mark, you see the red, it's sort of a, a, horizontal, a, a vertical line of red, that's yes. called a chop mark. The bigger the chop mark, the more important the person who owned it or the collector. It's not the artist's name, it's not the, the text that indicates right. what's happening in the scene, but this okiyo or floating world print Japanese woodblock 
is in fact ha was owned by a very very prominent member of society because mm. that shop is so big. So big, right? Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. So that's one of the things you can look for if you know nothing about Japanese wood block plates. Look, look for, that, for that and look for the registration or the way the color. Think about a coloring book. The way the color is is actually applied onto in between the black so lines. So every time you're naming one of these things, I just keep thinking cha ching, cha ching, cha ching, yeah. cha ching. So, cha -ching. so with right. the frame yeah. and the the, the frame prints. is about seven hundred dollars. The print is worth about fifteen hundred. That's amazing. It's amazing, and it's one of and many. It's there are others like it. It's right. really gorgeous. So you see some of these like um, little striations in the paper. Don't mm -hmm. worry about that on a Japanese wood black print. That's pretty common. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so we have another frame here. Well, when you look at prints, I want you to think about something which is called the pull. The dark, the pull is when you pull the plate, the the inked metal plate off the paper. So when you see the pull, you want to make sure it's a fresh pull. If you see sort of muddy lines or lines that look like they went astray, or it's sort of like when you put on your mascara and it starts to bleed, you want to see the idea that you will have, again, a nice fresh pull. That's a good pull, so a good piece, about 150 bucks. Just really quickly, if you could tell us, what's the value on this? This is a French galley piece of glass. It's called cameo glass. You can see the two parts of the cameo glass mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Value on that piece is about $600. What would Dare that have been used for? 1880. Like what would this have been used for? Yes. A flower, a posy, okay. if you will. Okay. Nothing more. Good Ron smiling. <laughs> <That's big laughs> well, thank you, Dr. Lori. And you can bring your treasures to Dr. Lori for appraisal at her Antiques Home Show on stage here at the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. You can see our show hours right there on your screen and watch for Dr. Lori back here with us tomorrow morning on Pittsburgh Today Live. More great